What's up YouTube, Jeff back again, and today I'm coming at you guys with another Galaxy S22 Ultra video. Before I jump into today's topic, I'm gonna remind you guys that today we're kicking off our giveaway for March. So if you guys haven't yet entered, go check out the giveaway on Twitter. Actually, I need to pin the new giveaway. This is still the February giveaway. Chose the winners for that one yesterday. You can win a flagship phone of your choice, an S22 Ultra, an iPhone, any flagship you want and $500 cash and a Redmi Note 11 Pro. That's gonna end on March 31st. So going on all March, so check that out. Today, I wanna to talk about five problems with the Galaxy S22 Ultra and how to solve them. These are not problems that I have per se, but problems that people have actually posted in the comments. And no, these are not things that are wrong with everyone's device. I'm not saying the Galaxy S22 Ultra is a bad phone. It's not, it's a great phone. But there's a couple things that come up. People want some ideas on how they can kind of fix them or mitigate these issues if they notice them. So here's my five things. Someone mentioned about me using Google Keep. I haven't used it lately. So I brought the Google Keep back, it's right here. The very first one is battery life issues. So let's talk about that. How can you mitigate some battery life issues on your S22 Ultra? Well, I talked about this a little bit in another video that I did actually. If you go into the settings and you go to battery and device care, there's a couple of things that you can actually do. One, you can use the optimize button to optimize this, close background apps, all that kind of stuff. Of course, you can check for software updates. The other thing you can do though, is you can go in here and go into automation and you can actually check the auto optimize daily, auto restart at separate times. So that way it auto restarts the device, which clears everything out, kind of gets rid of any apps that are running that you aren't using. And you can also turn on adaptive power saving if you really, really want to save power. Now, of course, this does have a risk of potentially stopping some of your apps from receiving notifications. I don't like to use adaptive power saving myself. I don't really have any huge battery life issues with the S22 Ultra, it gets me through the day. But if you're experiencing some issues, you can experiment with this. I do recommend the auto optimize daily and the auto restart at set times. I think those are both great features. And of course, if you wanna optimize manually, you can go in and do that. The other thing that you can do, of course, is you can go down into the display settings, up to the display settings here. And if you go into the display settings, if you have some battery life issues, you can change your screen resolution. So you notice I've got mine on FHD+, but if you're running it on WQHD+, which is the highest resolution, you can obviously turn that down. I wouldn't go all the way down to HD because it just doesn't look good, but FHD+, is just fine. The other thing, of course, is your motion smoothness. You can go and change that down to 60 hertz instead of being adaptive up to 120 hertz. That will also save you some battery life. Now, the last thing you can do, I've talked about great wallpaper packs before. If you really have some battery life issues and you wanna to try to minimize and get every last ounce, you could use a nice AMOLED wallpaper from something like Backdrops, it has a lot of black in it. That tends to save you some battery life as well on an AMOLED device like the S22 Ultra. Also, drop your opinions on my pronunciation of AMOLED below. I know people have some really strong opinions on that. Okay, so that's the first thing, battery life issues, a couple of things you can do to mitigate those. The next one is size and one-handed use. Uh, well, what do I mean by that? Well, honestly, I just mean this is a big phone. And even if you love your Galaxy S22 Ultra, you might say, I love this device. I love everything it does, but sometimes it's a little too big. I can't reach the top easily. You know, I have pretty big hands and even I have some problems sometimes. What you can do is head into the settings and you can search for, it's just easier to search for it. Search for one-handed mode. And if you find one-handed mode, it's in advanced features. You can go ahead and turn that on. You can see I've already turned one-handed mode on. You can actually go into the settings, kind of change how it's turned on, whether you're using gestures or button navigation. What you do is you just swipe down the center bottom edge of the screen, so down here, and it gives you a tiny little screen here, kind of picture in picture, where you can easily reach stuff. And then you can just swipe back down to get to full screen. This is super useful and I find myself actually using it as well for occasional things that you know I need to do that just make it easier to reach the phone. Now, sometimes it is hard to activate because when you actually swipe down, you might accidentally pull down the notification shade, which you guys saw I just did right there. But in general, it works for those times where you just need to reach something quickly and the screen's just a little bit too big. So that's one-handed mode. Uh, the next is screen and display issues. Now, we all know that there was this flickering issue at the launch. I haven't seen that myself, but of course, uh, going back into display settings, one thing you can do to kind of fix that issue is to make sure you're using the vivid screen mode and you're using FHD plus here and not WQHD plus until Samsung comes out with a patch for that. But some other issues that people have told me about is they wanna use all of their apps in full screen. And you can do that. If you go into the full screen apps portion, you can go in and actually change this aspect ratio 
and then camera cutout, kind of how it behaves with the camera cutout, hide it versus not, and also how the aspect ratio works for certain apps, as you can see like Netflix right there. So this is something you can do. Also, another thing too, that is a bonus tip here. If you do go down to advanced features with multitasking, if you go to labs, let me decline this spam call. If you go to labs, you can turn on multi-window for all apps as well and full screen and split view for all apps. So not just full screen for specific apps or specific aspect ratios for different apps, you can turn on full screen and split screen view, which is awesome. I'm running both of these labs features, very helpful to take full advantage of your display on the S22 Ultra. Okay, so that's some display screen issues people have mentioned. The next one is lag. Honestly, I haven't had any lag on my Galaxy S22 Ultra. However, I'm just navigating the UI and everything, playing games, this thing absolutely destroys everything. But if you're noticing some lag issues, there's a couple of things you can do. One is what I already mentioned. You could go into the device care and battery settings. You can optimize, just like we said, for the battery life. You can also go in here and do the uh, restart. Ox no, that's contact us. You can go into the automation, do the auto restart to make sure you're kind of keeping your phone clean at all times. That makes sure that everything is optimized and running nicely. But if the device still isn't quite fast enough for you, I show this in my other video, you can go into the about phone section and you can actually turn on developer mode, which will enable you to reduce the screen animation. And I go ahead and do that now myself. Just don't wanna show my phone number here. So I'm gonna quickly zip over here. You just tap on the build number a bunch of times till it makes you a developer. Then back out of these options, which I'm gonna do really quick, and you'll find developer options at the very bottom of the phone. Just didn't wanna reveal my phone number in the uh, about phone menu. Tap on developer options, and you can actually go down here, scroll down, and you'll find the uh, animation scaling. It's kind of far down, it's right here. Window animation scale, transition, and animator duration scale. You can go ahead and change all of these to 0.5. It'll just make your phone feel a little bit snappier. And if you're experiencing any lag, it might be something that you like. I personally don't like to turn these uh, all the way to, say, some people like to turn these all the way down to zero. I find that a little bit jarring, so I like to leave them on 0.5. But that's something you can also do to mitigate any lag issues you might have. And then the last thing, which I'm gonna go ahead and actually close out my keep document here, is camera issues and shutter lag. And this is an issue that Samsung phones have had for quite some time. It's not an issue that's gonna necessarily go away. Um, they, I don't know why they don't fix this issue. Basically, if you take a photo of something moving, the photo just kind of lags. You kind of see there, you see the hesitation in it? And that's, you know, that doesn't really happen with a Pixel phone or an iPhone. I should have brought my Pixel 6 Pro here to kind of show the difference. One thing you can do though, is if you notice over here where it has this little yellow dot, you guys can see it there when I take another photo. See the little dot over here? That's actually the uh, scene optimizer and focus optimizer right there. You could turn that off and then you can, see right there, I enabled it, focus enhancer on. If you turn that off, it does tend to do a little bit better. It's still a little, not quite as quick as some of my other phones, but it is quicker. And you can actually go into settings as well and turn off scene optimizer as well, which will improve it a little more. I personally leave that on though, because that does also improve some of your regular pictures. So it's not really worth turning it off fully. Anyway, guys, those are some problems I've heard some people mentioning in the comments section of my videos. Hopefully these tips are very helpful for you guys. If you wanna check out our giveaway, go check out my Twitter. The link for the giveaway is also in the description. You can follow me on Twitter, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon for future videos like this. I appreciate you guys checking it out and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.